University Hospital Waterford is the regional haematological unit and we have offered a consult-based service for a splenectomy since 2010. In this time, we've performed 18 laparoscopic splenectomies for haematological disorders. The largest spleen weighed 2 kilograms and the lowest preoperative platelet count was 3. Here are some examples of the commonest indications for haematological splenectomy. ITP was by far the most common indication in our cohort. Patients receive a general anaesthetic and a nasogastric tube. They are positioned in the Lloyd Davis position with a wedge under the left shoulder and are left side up. We use a 30 degree 10 mm camera, a harmonic scalpel and an echelon laparoscopic stapler with a vascular load. Hassan pneumoperitoneum is obtained via a 12 mm super umbilical port and a 5 mm and 12 mm port are placed under direct vision. A further 15 mm port is placed out laterally for the endobag and retractor. All patients get preoperative cross-sectional imaging to outline the hyalur anatomy and to define where the splenic flexure sits in relation to the spleen. Each case begins with division of the most accessible perisplenic attachments. For the first case, the spleen is retracted anteriorly with a paddle retractor, followed by division of some medial omental adhesions. The spleen is lifted from below so that the posterior and lateral attachments can be divided with the harmonic scalpel. The pedicle is sequentially skeletalized and care is taken not to cause any splenic vessel bleeding with the harmonic scalpel. The goal is to isolate the pedicle as much as possible to make it accessible to the stapler. The laparoscopic stapler is then used to begin dividing across the hilum. Here you can see large branched hyalur vessels becoming visible. These are further dissected out with the harmonic scalpel, taking care not to cause bleeding. These large vessels can also be seen on the pre-op CT image which is overlain here. The stapler is then used to divide the remainder of the splenic hilum until the spleen is fully resected. This next case highlights some different anatomy in a smaller spleen. The hilum is again divided with the vascular stapler. Once division of the hilum is complete, there are still some superior and lateral attachments. These are easily divided with the harmonic. Here you can see the staple line, and as with all cases, the spleen is then extracted in an endobag. Here we have our third and final case, 
Similar to the first case, we begin by dividing the medial or mental attachments. Instead of a paddle, a fan retractor was used. Again, the hilum is gradually skeletalized to allow insertion of the vascular stapler. After division of the remaining attachments, the spleen is again extracted in an endobag. Our patients all receive preoperative immunization. Ensure to look for and remove an accessory spleen and do not give platelets until the vessels are clamped. We generally accept platelets over 30, but we're guided by hematology and anesthetics. As always, positioning and retraction are key and start with the most accessible attachments, gradually exposing the hilum to facilitate use of the vascular stapler and avoid causing bleeding with the harmonic.